and welcome to this Q&A on identity making and the networked capabilities approach. I'm Dr Jenna Conde, I'm a senior lecturer in digital society at Western Sydney University and this is Dr Teresa Frist who's a research fellow with the Institute of Culture and Society. Um, before we go any further it's important to acknowledge that we're recording um, on the lands of the Darug and Gundungurra people and we pay our respects to elders past and present. So Teresa, you're interested in the concept of identity making and are doing research around that. Can you tell us um, what that means? Mm -hmm. The concept of identity making um, is um, proposed by researchers from the University of Sydney, Osaki and Rima. And what they've done is come up with a model which looks at identity making as a process. So it's pushing back against this essentialist notion of identity as being static mm. and um, really unpacking identity as a dynamic process. And what they propose is um, that there's three modes to identity making. Okay. The, the reflective mode, where you're sort of looking at sort of your identity and then projecting ahead in terms of your goals and aspirations. Mm -hmm. There's the narrative mode where you're um, looking at making your identity in terms of ref um, looking back at your past and how that informs the present. Mm -hmm. um, and then the present aspect is the active mode where the identity making is happening in a very specific situation and set of circumstances. Okay. So what I like about it is that um, it really sort of highlights that identity making is an interplay between sort of the past, present and future. Yeah, so they're all kind of stacked on each other. You can't really get away from yourself. And, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think for me it's very much about how we're spending a lot of time thinking about who we are and mm -hmm. working on it actively as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, you're relating that concept of identity making to the um, concept of the networked self. Yeah. Um, how are you doing that? How are you relating those two? Mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. So um, the concept of the network self is um, by Zizi Papaturisi mm -hmm. and she's a communications um, scholar from the US and she really sort of highlights how um, network technologies are reconfiguring the social and really um, across time and space mm -hmm. as well and what I think um, an important point that she does make is that we shouldn't just be looking at how um, looking at, at the connections within our networks but also um, what is not visible is the disconnections okay so I think this sort of really highlights maybe a provocation around who is included um, in sort of these networks but then also who are, um, yeah what is excluded okay as well. yeah so what we can maybe what we see and what we can't yeah. see in terms of, of who's connected to who. Mm -hmm. So those networked selves then, are they making networked publics? Yes, I think um, it connects to um, Dana Boyd's concept of networked um, publics, which draws on her research around um, young people um, and social network sites. And I think, um, she once again sort of um, yeah highlights that interplay between sort of the individual sort of and the group mm. and the collective yeah as yeah. well um, and she highlights a few affordances in terms of what um, these social networks or social media enable us to do and a couple of those affordances um, are uh, persistence mm. in terms okay. of what we do online yeah gets recorded and archived and stays there so it persists in not going away <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other um, affordance um, is re replicability so in terms of these bits of data mm -hmm. and information online can be recombined and repurposed and I think that raises the question around like veracity in terms of who or what do we trust online mm. if everything is sort of can be recombined and repurposed yeah yeah okay so what we put there might be used in different ways and someone else might take charge of our identity making yes exactly. 
Um, yeah. And that relates to um, uh, uh, a couple of dynamics that she also highlights that relate to her term of networked publics. And one of those dynamics is um, the invisible audiences. Okay. That when we're sort of online and um, interacting online in different spaces and so forth, we might be very clear about who we're connecting with, mm -hmm. but there's also invisible audiences. Yeah. And the example um, um, I'd like to highlight there is the data brokers who are digitally profiling all of our online searches. Mm -hmm. And what they're capable of doing with those data points is um, assessing um, our political sort of affiliations, okay, yeah. our hobbies, our purchases. Yeah. So they're in a sense um, building up what's known as a data double or a data dossier, which is a digital identity which makes assumptions about who you are based on your online interactions. Yeah, so. it's quite <laughs> it's quite alarming. Um, and yeah, and I guess it's sort of we've got this identity making where we've got more control and agency over who we're who we are and trying to get some sense of control over managing ourselves in online spaces and then there's this sort of invisible um, side of things going on yeah. um, which is quite different from maybe what you might imagine is the audience of who you are. Exactly. Um, so you've written an article mm. which introduces another new concept and we, we need all these different ways of thinking about what's happening to ourselves in digital times. Uh, but you've worked with Pip Collin um, on uh, from the Young and Resilient Research Centre as well um, on a networked capability approach. Can you tell us about that and how that's useful? Sure. Uh, the networked capability approach draws on the work of Zizi Papacharisi mm -hmm. and her concept of the networked self, but and also Amartya Sen's notion of a capability approach. Okay. And combining those. Um, we found really sort of generative in terms of um, exploring the, the ways in which digital platforms, people and places mm -hmm. interrelate with one another. Um, and so there are digital sort of intermediaries, which are sort of the platforms and the algorithms. There's yeah. the social intermediaries, which are um, our social connections. And then there's the spatial intermedia intermediaries, which are all the different places that we're able to connect through yeah. um, via the network. Okay. And um, what the concept also really highlights is that that combination um, of people, places and platform can really sort of enable and open up opportunities for freedom and agency, mm. but then also within a different set of arrangements and circumstances, it can really clamp down and constrain our freedom and agency okay. um, in terms of what we value um, for ourselves and our community and okay. society. Yeah, mm. so it's quite grounding our identity making in terms of our capabilities of where we are and who we are and who we're connected to. So I just, I don't know, it's quite, quite material sort of yes. um, grounding. Definitely. Um, so one of the questions I had was around how that networked capability approach um, connects to some of the social movements mm -hmm. that we've seen that are very much part of people's identity making yeah. now. Yeah. Um, what I think the networked capability approach offers is really sort of maybe helping to unpack all the different, um, the interrelationship between those three components and how they can be used as a force to sort of mobilise for specific social movements. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so for example, sort of the Black Lives Matter and, um, and other sort of social movements as well in terms of really connecting with people and crowds and communities across vast sort of spaces and regions. Mm. Um, and that's enabled through those social sort of media networks. Um, yeah, so. Okay. So we've got identity making, the network self, network publics, <laughs> and now the networked capabilities approach, and that's um, really helping to sort of understand what people are trying to do with social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, Teresa. Okay. <laughs>